going to show you how to make steel cut oats in your instant pot. This is a really great recipe. It's so easy to make and it's really convenient for breakfast in the morning. It's also great because it's so versatile. You can add whatever sweeteners and whatever toppings you like. So I'm going to start by adding one cup of steel cut oats into the instant pot and then And then I'm just going to pour in three cups of water. Then you want to cover your Instant Pot and make sure that your valve is pushed back to sealing. Now I'm going to push the button right here that says manual, yours might say pressure cook. And I'm going to set the timer, use these plus and minus buttons to set the time for three minutes. Now that is all that you have to do. It'll start automatically as soon as the pot reaches pressure. So you can see here that the screen says on. When the pot is coming to pressure, it's going to say on. And then as soon as your pot comes to pressure, your pin back here is going to pop up and your countdown timer will start. So in this case, it'll read three minutes and then it'll count down three, two, one, and then it will beep again and your cook time will be done. At that point, you want to let the pressure naturally release, which means you're not gonna do anything to the valve. You're just gonna let the pressure go release on its own. It'll take about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so my cook time is over and you can see now the screen is going to start going up in time so it will read zero when it finishes and as your instant pot switches to keep warm your minutes will increase and that will let you know how long it's been since your food finished cooking so with oatmeal you want to let the pressure release naturally Mommy. So with oatmeal, you want to let the pressure release naturally, and that can take anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. And that time that the pressure is releasing is important because it's continuing the cook time of the oatmeal. Okay, so my pressure released naturally. It took about 14 minutes for the pressure to release. My pen dropped, and so now it's safe to take off the lid and stir my oatmeal up. This is just plain oatmeal. Of course, you can add in other things before your oatmeal starts cooking. Um, but one of the things that we like to do is just make plain oatmeal and then everybody can top it with raisins, walnuts. We like to put in some maple syrup, some butter. So this is just a really versatile way to make oatmeal in your Instant Pot. Okay, now I'm going to show you a very popular way of using your Instant Pot and that's to make hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled eggs in the Instant Pot are not only really easy, really easy to clean up, um, but they also peel much easier than eggs that you would cook on the stove top. So all you're going to do is you're going to start with your empty liner, you're going to pour in one cup of water, and then I have here six eggs and I'm gonna put them in this little basket. If you have a steamer basket like this, you can use this, or you can simply use the trivet that came with your Instant Pot, and then you're just gonna set that right in your pot. You don't want to put the eggs right on the bottom of the Instant Pot, so you do wanna use some way of elevating the eggs above the water. And then you're gonna cover your Instant Pot, change, set the valve, to ceiling 
and then hit manual or pressure cook and set your time for five minutes. So your pressure is going to have to build. So until your pot reaches pressure, it's going to say on. But as soon as your pin comes up and your pressure has um, built, then your pot will switch to the countdown timer. So you'll see it say five minutes and then it will go down all the way to one. And then after that last minute, it will beep, letting you know that the cook time is complete. And at that point, with your eggs, you wanna go ahead and release that pressure. You're gonna do a quick release of the pressure and then your eggs will be almost done. Okay, so my cook time is complete and with these hard boiled eggs, I don't want to let the pressure naturally release, I'm going to do what's called a quick release, which means that I'm going to actually turn the sealing valve to let the pressure out manually. Now with this, people can be kind of intimidated and scared because you do have all that steam coming out, but as long as you keep your hand out of the path of the steam, then you will be fine. So just take the knob and switch it over to venting. And depending on how much liquid content you have in your instant pot will, will affect how long it takes for the pressure to release. With hard boiled eggs, it's not going to take with hard boiled, egg, hard boiled eggs, it's not going to take long for your pressure to release because you only have that one cup of water. With something like chicken broth or a batch of marinara sauce or a big pot of soup, it would take your pot longer to release the pressure. Leave it in. Okay, and my pin has dropped, which means that it's now safe to open the lid of oh, my Instant Pot. Oh, uh -huh. it. it is hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I got my eggs. So I'm just going to lift this basket out and transfer my eggs to my ice water. And as soon as they are cool, they will be ready to eat and enjoy. Okay, so now I have my eggs in the ice bath. I'm just gonna let them sit in there for a few minutes before I peel them. Here's how to make a box of macaroni into the Instant Pot. Okay, so here is another really simple, easy recipe. This is just a box of Annie's macaroni. And of course, macaroni is so easy to make on the stovetop. But I actually love making it in the Instant Pot because it's even easier if you can believe that. So we're gonna take out the little cheese packet. I'm gonna dump those in. Nope. Ah! Them in there. Dump all of the macaroni noodles in your instant pot. Pour in the water. We're pouring in one cup of water. There you go. The macaroni. And we're just going to cover it. Move our valve to sealing, and then select the time by putting pushing manual, and then adjusting the time down to three minutes. So the mac macaroni is going to cook for three minutes on high pressure, and then we are going to quick release the pressure when the cook time is complete. One good rule of thumb anytime you make pasta in your Instant Pot is that you're going to cook it for at least half of the time. Um, when in doubt, you can take another minute from it from the cook time of the pasta. So if your pasta needs to cook for 10 minutes, according to the package directions, then you would cook it for four or five minutes in your Instant Pot. Okay, so our cook time is complete, so we're gonna let the pressure out carefully. So you wanna make sure you keep all hands and arms out of the path of the steam because you can get burned. But as long as you just Grab the knob on the end, you will be just fine. Okay, I can go over it so I can try that knob. You could, as long as you didn't put your hand in front of it. As soon as the
the pin drops, you're good to take the lid off. Whoa! An hour. Whoa! And our macaroni is cooked. And because we didn't use too much water, we're not going to need to drain it. We can just go ahead and stir the macaroni. Are you going to stir? Yeah. We're going to add in a little bit of butter and a few tablespoons of milk. Okay, you can stir. Oh, hold on, I gotta get the butter in. Okay, so um, about a tablespoon of butter. Okay, Josiah is gonna stir that for us. And about three tablespoons of milk. And I'm just using whole milk. Yep, stir it up. And you can. Um, you wanna? You wanna make sure you open the bag all the way. There you go. It's okay. All right, and then just sprinkle your cheese mixture on top, stir it really well, and you have super easy macaroni and cheese. This next recipe that I'm going to show you is one that you're going to want to make often because it is really easy. The title, in fact, is called Ridiculously Easy Chicken Press, and it's super practical, quick, and just a really great, convenient way to cook chicken in your Instant Pot. So I have here two chicken breasts. I have a spice mixture that I mixed myself. You can use the mixture that I include in the recipe, or you can use your own spice mixture this is a mixture of kosher salt, garlic powder, onion powder, dried oregano, paprika, and freshly ground pepper. And I'm going to sprinkle half of this mixture on the tops of the chicken breasts. And I'm going to save that other half for the bottoms. I don't have to touch the chicken breast at all, which is really part of what makes it so easy. Now I'm going to turn my Instant Pot on and I'm going to hit saute. Now, this is one of the best features about the Instant Pot because it means that you can brown your meat or your vegetables. You can build flavor right in your Instant Pot before you cook it under pressure. Now, when you hit saute, it's gonna take a few minutes to come up to temperature. You'll be able to feel the heat, but what you wanna look for on your screen is you wanna wait until it beeps and reads hot. It'll take just a few minutes and then once your screen reads hot, you'll be ready to add in your meat. I know it can be tempting to want to skip this step and just add your chicken right in. However, you really need to do this step not only for the purpose of building flavor and having chicken that looks a lot nicer, but also because it's included in part of the cook time. You're gonna brown your chicken for two minutes on each side, and then you're gonna cook it for five minutes under pressure and all of that time is going to be contributing to ending, contributing to the overall cook time of your chicken. Okay, so now my screen reads hot, so I'm ready to brown my chicken. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of ghee to the bottom of my pan. You can use something like ghee, which is clarified butter. It has a higher smoke point than butter, or you could use a different oil that you like to brown things with. So I'm gonna add these chicken breasts, spice side down. And then I'm gonna add the remaining spice mixture to the chicken breasts. Set a timer for two minutes, and after two minutes, flip the chicken over and cook it for two minutes on the other side. Okay, so my chicken has browned for two minutes on the first side, so I'm going to go ahead and flip them over. And I'm going to set the timer again for another two minutes on this side. Alright, so my chicken has now browned for two minutes on both sides, and I'm ready to add the water and start pressure cooking. One important thing to remember whenever you use the saute feature and you brown 
or saute things before pressure cooking is that you need to make sure that you deglaze the bottom of the pan. And all that means is that when you brown or when you saute, sometimes you can get little food, pieces of food stuck to the bottom of the pot and you wanna make sure you scrape any of that up before you start pressure cooking. If you have too much food particles stuck to the bottom of the pot, the Instant Pot can think that it's not working correctly and you can get a burn message. So I'm going to pour in the water Use my spatula to scrape up those pieces just a little bit, and then go ahead and cover up the chicken. Okay, so I've got my lid on. I've turned my valve to ceiling. I'm going to hit cancel so that it knows to stop the saute function. And then I'm going to hit manual or on yours it might say pressure cook. And I'm going to adjust the time for five minutes. Your chicken will take a few minutes to come to pressure. Your pot isn't full so it's not going to take very long. And then it's going to switch from on to your five minute countdown. After the cook time is completed, after five minutes, it's going to switch to keep warm. And during that time, your pressure is gonna start releasing naturally. You want to let your pressure release naturally. That means you're not gonna to touch the valve at all for 10 minutes. And then as soon as you see 10 on your screen, you can release the remaining pressure manually. Okay, my pressure released naturally for 10 minutes, which means now I can go ahead and if there's any pressure remaining, I can go ahead and release the remaining pressure and then as soon as your pen is dropped, you can take your lid off. Now the chicken is done at this point. I will just take it out and show you. Now, of course, it's always a good idea to check the internal temperature of any meat that you cook. So I'm just going to use an instant read thermometer, stick it right into the center of the chicken breast and make sure that it reads 160 degrees. And this definitely does. So my chicken is done. It is juicy, delicious, and perfectly cooked. Ridiculously easy chicken breast cooked right in your Instant Pot. This next recipe I'm going to show you is for shredded chicken tacos. And this is a recipe from a blog called Instant Loss. You should definitely check out Instant Loss. Brittany is an amazing blogger and an amazing person. So this is her recipe and I'm gonna show you how to make it in the Instant Pot. So I have here just two chicken breasts. I'm just gonna put them right in the bottom of the pot. I'm going to add a cup of salsa. I'm not gonna stir any of this. I'm just gonna dump it right in. And then I'm adding a half a cup of green salsa. Now that salsa is salsa that I made. You can find the recipe on my blog. It is so good. And then the final ingredient is just a quarter cup of taco seasoning. You can make it yourself or you can get seasoning from a pack. So that's chicken, salsa, green salsa, and then taco seasoning. And you're not gonna stir. All you do is just put all of them right in the pot. Put on your lid, turn your valve to ceiling, now hit manual or yours might say pressure cook. Adjust your time for 15 minutes. Now this is going to cook for 15 minutes on high pressure and then you're going to let the pressure natu naturally release, which means you're not going to touch the knob at all. You're going to let the pressure come out. It'll take about 12 minutes and then you'll notice your pin drop and it will be safe for you to take the lid off of your Instant Pot. At that point, all you're gonna do is shred your chicken and you can serve it with corn tortillas, some shredded lettuce, some guacamole, whatever your favorite taco toppings are, or you can make it into nachos, really a lot of different varieties and way to, ways to enjoy this dish.